The workshops for May 5th, 2021 are now called to order at 3.05 p.m. Mrs. Bass, please call the roll. District 1, Barbara McQuinn. Here. District 2, Alexandria Ayala. Here. District 3, Karen Brill. District 4, Erica Whitfield. Here. District 5, Frank Barbieri. Here. District 6, Marcia Andrews. Here. District 7, Deborah Robinson. We have quorum with all seven board members present. Also joining us is Superintendent Dr. Donald Fenoy, General Counsel Sean Bernard, Inspector General Teresa Michael, and Board Clerk Carol Bass. Senior staff members will join us periodically as directed by the superintendent. Viewers and listeners can access the meeting today by either watching on Comcast channels 234 and 235, UVerse channel 99, or by using the YouTube link on our webpage at palmbeachschools.org. We also offer a listening only option which the public can access by calling 561-357-5900 or toll free at 1-866-930-7015. The meeting ID is 561-880-1124, pound sign. This meeting is being transcribed by a closed captioner, so remember to speak at a reasonable pace. Will everyone please stand for the pledge to be led by Superintendent Fenoy. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On behalf of the board, I'd like to welcome any public speakers who are joining us in person today. While your attendance here at the board meeting is appreciated, please be mindful of important safety protocols that the board now has in place to conform with COVID-19 safety guidelines. Please respect this cautionary warning that in the event of interference with the orderly processes of the meeting, failure to follow the safety protocols and procedures or otherwise disruptive conduct will result in removal of the person from the meeting. Specifically, please sit only in designated seats and do not move about the room unless you are speaking at the podium. Exiting to the bathroom or leaving the building. Do not move any furniture. Maintain social distancing six feet apart. Remain in the designated visitor's area and leave the property once your visit is complete. School police has been instructed to remove anyone from the meeting who does not adhere to these safety protocols and procedures as I have outlined. Please abide by these protocols so Palm Beach County police officers do not have to take action. Mr. Superintendent, workshop. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Today is the fourth update from the Chief of Staff Office on the development of our next strategic plan. As we officially move into phase two of our engagement plan, today's update will focus on providing high level findings to the board and public related to our phase one feedback survey, which closed on April the 9th. We recognize individuals, including the board, may want to explore the survey data in ways that are not addressed as part of today's workshop. So members of the board and the larger Palm Beach community are encouraged to visit palmbeachschools.org slash strategic plan development where they will find an interactive data dashboard for everyone to access. Be sure to click on the surveys and opportunities to get involved quick link on the left hand side of the web page. As a reminder, the results of the phase one feedback survey will be used by the strategic plan steering committee to draft initial goals for our next plan. Their proposals will be shared with the board and community on Wednesday, May 26th, and phase two focus groups will occur in late May and early June to ensure interested individuals have an additional opportunity to provide their input. Finally, don't forget to tune into the next strategic plan steering committee meeting, which takes place next week on May 12th at 4 p.m. More information is available on our website and a recording of the meeting will be posted for those who are unable to watch live. I will now turn it over to our Chief of Staff's Office to provide us with more information on phase one server results, as well as our next set of milestones for phase two. Mr. Tierney. Chairman Barbieri, Vice Chair, Mrs. Brill, school board members, Dr. Fenoy, I'm pleased today to be here to help facilitate board workshop number four on our strategic plan development process. Joining me at the table is Ms. Kathy Villavicencio. You see our agenda. Today we'll provide an update on the strategic plan development. That's update number four. We will cover the steering committee meeting. It was held on April 16th. We'll talk about survey highlights from our phase one survey. We'll cover a summary of the input from community meetings. We'll also review the stakeholder engagement plan. We are now in phase two, so the pre-work is done and we're in design phase. That will cover the important role that focus groups will play in phase two, culminating in the May 26th workshop where draft goals will be brought to the, brought to the board. Then we'll cover next steps. Strategic plan steering committee number two took place April 16th. That was both streamed live and recorded and posted on our website. 
the topics covered were reviewing data from our current strategic plan. So we looked at the data associated with the long-term outcomes of our current plan. That data highlighted inequities. So we discussed root causes of those inequities, and that entire process was done through the equity lens that the board has been insisting that we use for both evaluation of current work and for creation of the strategic plan moving forward. For our phase one feedback survey, for approximately two and a half weeks, our survey was open. We surveyed the community. We conducted that survey in English, Spanish, Haitian Creole, and Portuguese. It was mainly done online. There were paper and pencil surveys either when needed or more convenient for certain constituency groups. Okay, and those questions range from selected response to open-ended. The topics covered were awareness of our current strategic plan as well as possible directions and priorities for the next strategic plan. This is a summary of that survey. So I'll remind the board when we started, we hope to match the 18,000 individual interactions that led to the creation of our current strategic plan. We're pre pleased to announce that we had 28,764 responses. So we significantly passed our goal. 49.1% of the respondents were parents. We're not surprised by that, as vested as they are in their children's education. I'll call the board's attention to the lower left portion of that survey. 22.5% of the respondents were students. So on one hand, you can say, well, 6,472 is a relatively small sample considering the number of students that we have. And while true, this is the first systemic outreach to elevate student, student voice at least in recent history, so we are pleased with the almost 6,500 student responses while we acknowledge still work to be done on elevating that voice. Ms. Phil Vicencio. All right, so um, I just wanted to draw attention to something Dr. Fenoy said, as well as you'll see the QR code there. We do have a Power BI data dashboard available on our website, so palmbeachschools.org slash strategic plan development. And if you pick, if you click on surveys and opportunities to get involved, you can actually interact with this data um, yourself. And that goes for the board as well as members of the general public. And so again, we recognize that we have a limited amount of time today and there may be some data exploration you would like to do. And so we are making all of the survey data available to you and the larger community to be able to do that since again, we'll just be covering certain highlights today. So we collected some self-reported demographic data to get an understanding of our survey respondents. And so you can see here on the left-hand side the breakdown of um, survey respondents by race. And we also added a question about um, ethnicity, and that's uh, primarily because sometimes folks may identify as white or black, but we're not necessarily capturing whether they're Hispanic, Latino, Latina, Haitian, or Brazilian, and so, for example, I'm Cuban, but I would select white as my race. So this question kind of just sheds some light and tries to dive a little bit deeper into that data, which I know we talked about during the root cause analysis, trying to disaggregate it a little bit more than what we typically do. So of the over 28,000 responses, you can see that um, close to a little bit over 27% identified as one of those ethnicities. So just wanted to call attention to that. But again, this is really just about understanding our survey respondents. Um, but I know that we had a lot of folks emailing the strategic plan email inbox that I manage, and some of them really uh, preferred not to answer just because sometimes survey data can be used in a divisive way, such as something that I wanted to bring up um, with the board. But here, that's just a breakdown. And then we wanted to kind of just go straight into it and really focus on the required question around top five priorities. So it's important to note that you also have an appendix um, to this presentation that we won't necessarily get into. But I just want to thank Russell Clement and his team, particularly Anna, Amanda Burke and Melanie Platt, for the hard work that they did to help analyze the open-ended responses and put that appendix together. So again, just wanna elevate and celebrate um, Team Palm Beach as part of this, because I know it's a lot of folks behind Mr. Tierney and I um, getting this work moving forward. Um, so the participants were just asked to pick their top five priorities from a list of options. These options largely came from guidance from Insight Education Group 
as well as um, our last strategic plan and what we, or current strategic plan, and what we asked folks to give input on. And then we also had an other option, which I'll get to in a second, where folks could specify a topic that, or a priority that they didn't feel was um, represented in their list. And so this wasn't a ranking, so if you picked your top five, we didn't ask you of those five which one is more important. Sometimes from a survey perspective, the return on investment is uh, not as big because the ranking questions are a little bit hard to do in a survey, especially a, an electronic one. So we just asked them to pick their top five and they were required to pick five. And so what you'll see is just the overall totals of which priorities receive the most votes across all stakeholder groups. So community members, parents, students, um, and district employees. And so just looking at the list, uh, what we have there is mental health and social emotional well wellness. Again, not surprising just given, you know, everything that's happened this past year with COVID. So it's important to understand that this is a survey that's a snapshot of a moment in time. So again, these are the community's priorities as reported, um, you know, during the, the month of uh, April. So again, just something to keep in mind in terms of survey data being a point in time. Um, and then as we dig into this a little bit more, we're really trying to use data as a flashlight, not necessarily a hammer. And that's something that Ms. Vertakis talked to us about on March 9th when we did our root cause analysis. So this is just trying to help us, you know, know better and do better, right? Which is something Dr. Fenoy has said um, many times as part of this process. So Again, as we dig a little bit deeper into this data today, and as you do your own data exploration on the data dashboard, just want to make sure that we are using this data to help, um, you know, light the way for what we need to be doing in the future, and not necessarily as punitive data um, or anything, you know, in that in that respect. So, um, on the next slide, we'll actually see a breakdown by stakeholder group. So. Um, we included the major groups here, employees, parents, and students. Uh, community members represented a, a small percentage there, so we, they're not on this slide. However, again, using the data dashboard, if you're curious to see what the top five priorities were for our um, community members, you can do that on the data dashboard. But it's interesting to see, you know, employees definitely ranked employee retention higher than, you know, parents or students, which makes sense given what their stakeholder group finds as important in their daily work. Um, uh, students also had expanding school choice and career programs a little bit higher than what we saw overall. And if we advance one more time, I just want to remind everyone that, um, based on that first slide that Mr. Tierney went over with the data, of the 28,000 and change respondents, you know, employees represent about 27% of that. That includes employees who also identified as parents, so we kept them in the employee category only just to keep the data a little bit clearer. Our parents represented about 50%. Um, so again, of the 28,000, 50% 50, 50 of the 28,000, that's kind of where their top five, top five priorities are. And then students who are a little bit more than 22% of the total number of survey results. And so you can see what their top five priorities are. So I think it's important to just proportionally, we're not weighting these things. I'm looking at Mrs. McQuinn, our resident math expert here, to make sure I'm doing a good job. But proportionally speaking, it's important to keep that in mind because not all of these are kind of equal in that sense. However, um, you know, again, if we click the slide one more time, just a reminder of what our um, top five were overall. So again, it's kind of like a popularity contest here. Whoever gets the most votes is seen as number one. So mental health and social emotional wellness, again, across everyone got the most votes, followed by school safety. Educational equity for all, which I think is really great considering what the board has kind of um, took upon themselves to begin this process and to have a strong foundation in equity. So it's reaffirming, I think, that the community is, is coming along with us on that journey. Um, accelerating student learning due to COVID, again, not surprising just given the current state of things, and then anti-bullying. And if you are curious to see how the other 19 priorities did, again, please go to the data dashboard on our website and you can see all the cumulative totals, 
You can do comparisons between groups um, and all that good stuff. So again, please take the time to do that and reach out to Mr. Tierney and myself if you have additional questions. So the next slide shows that 9,589 folks out of the 28,000 chose to give us another priority that they felt was not reflected in those other 19 that we gave them. And so again, just big shout out to Russell, Amanda, and Melanie in research and evaluation because they went through all 9,589 responses and coded the data to come up with specified themes. So those themes kind of, again, you'll see the bars kind of represent the relative times each written response was categorized and a written response could maybe have more than one theme, right? Because they had, I think, uh, 500 characters. <laughs> so they could give us more options if they chose to. But again, you could see folks across all stakeholder groups were talking about curriculum being a priority, you know, test preparation, student support, you know, COVID precautions. Again, that's something that we, we keep hearing about. So again, I'll, I'll let you read that list, um, but again, if you have questions on that after exploring the data dashboard, you can, you can let us know. And then the next slide kind of speaks to our phase one reflection, right? So we asked, again, open-ended responses. What would you start, stop, and continue um, for us as a district? So again, these were open-ended responses. They were optional. So at the bottom of each column, you can see how many of the 28,000 total respondents chose to leave optional uh, information for us. So 10,457 wanted to say what we should start doing as a district. 8,604 left some feedback on what we should stop doing. And 6,392 had some, some feedback on what we should continue doing. So, we have all the open-ended responses, so again, these are categorized thematically based on what our data folks um, put together. But again, if you want to see some of those open-ended responses, let me know. And again, just want to reiterate, we need to use data as a flashlight here. Staff has been working incredibly hard in each of their respective areas to the best of their abilities, and in no way should this be seen as a critique, right? I think this kind of helps us um, collect data, especially as we talk about um, attracting folks back to the school district of Palm Beach County. Yes, the survey was uh, administered under the guise of the strategic plan, but we can also use it as more general feedback to see how, again, we can get better at what we do. So, you know, some of these um, themes that you see popping up could just be a matter of, you know, are we, um, are we getting everything we need out into the community so that they understand what we do, how we do our work, are there things that we could leverage better so folks, again, have a better purview in what the school district does? So I'm being purposeful not to use like a word like communications, because that doesn't just fall on one department, that's everyone. So the strategic plan um, is an opportunity to just reassess what it is we do as a district and um, you know, taking everything with a grain of salt, right? Some folks have very strong opinions, so they're gonna respond to the survey, but these are their lived experiences, and so we want to make sure that we honor those and try to attend to them um, you know, outside of the strategic plan if you know, some of these things don't fall in there. But again, data as a flashlight, this is really uh, information we can learn from. So that wraps up kind of those highlights. Like I said, we're trying to keep it very high level. The information will be used by the steering committee to propose some initial goals that the board and the uh, public will hear about on May 26th. I believe the start time is 3.15. It will happen right after our uh, equity workshop number four. Uh, but again, please check out that um, data dashboard. I know Russell and his team um, are doing a great job trying to be transparent. So it's not only we're listening, but remember phase two is about validating the information we're collecting. So we really want to make sure that all that information is available to the public so that they can access it and kind of ask their own questions. Um, we also conducted some community meetings at the end of April to update folks, not just on the strategic plan, but also on the mission and vision and the equity work that will be coming um, forward for approval today at the special meeting. Uh, so again, we had folks join live, but we've also gotten a lot of hits um, to watch the recording, so that's great. And then we also had some interactive polls and chat transcripts, so even though 
um, you know, we didn't see everyone on video, folks were able to interact, and I know myself and other staff members were on there monitoring that chat. Um, I know with Ms. Ayala's uh, meeting, we were able to get into some Spanish there, so that was really great. Um, but again, all that is posted on Board Docs, so if you want to see your own results or results of your fellow board members or even for members of the public, again, all that information is accessible to everyone um, because transparency, I think, is one of the big tenets of you know, the chief of staff strategy and, and something that um, Dr. Fenoy also tasks us with, being as transparent as possible in this process. And so we didn't have a ton of data, right? We didn't have 28,000 responses like a survey. But I think it's always good to reflect and, and get some takeaways. So um, the first big takeaway is that there is some interest in planning future in-person meetings. Again, want to make sure that we're um, uh, prioritizing the health and safety of everyone. But we also recognize that while some folks really grasp the technology, um, we still have folks that prefer that in-person meeting, so we are looking into that and see what we can handle with staff capacity, but want to make that a possibility. Takeaway two was that, um, you know, educational equity is a priority, a top priority, just looking at the results. Again, we kind of message these meetings as being uh, updates on the strategic plan and equity work, so it's not surprising that most folks who showed up uh, also prioritize that as well. And then takeaway three was that we do know um, the community and parents in particular still have many questions related to next school year. I don't think that's a surprise, right? Um, so we had talked a little bit about, you know, if we can support community meetings in the future that kind of attend to those concerns that we see from the community because they seem to really appreciate um, that way of interacting. Uh, you know, I love board meetings. You guys know board workshops are my thing, but not everybody wants to watch board workshops. So Community meetings, I think, really gave folks a chance to interact with board members in a different way. So that's something for us to think about moving forward. Mr. Tierney? We started this process in phase one. That was Mr. Tierney, let me just hold one second. Ms. Brill has a question. Thank you. I just wanted to jump in. I've shared some information with Dr. Fenoy, and I think Mr. Tierney as well. But just to put it out there, I know it was a great idea to have the community meetings to get more input. but. The format did not work. I knew it wasn't going to work for my community. It did not work for my community. Um, you know, using the Inventbrite and that type of format. My, my community struggles sometimes even with Zoom. They finally got Zoom down, Pat. Mm -hmm. But it was a question of the timing. So I don't know that, that, you know, what I'm encouraging them to do is to make sure that they answer any online surveys. But, you know, the grandparents don't receive that and so and some of the parents don't you know pay attention to it so if we do go out later on for other input I think we do need to be a little more flexible in the way that we do it because that format just didn't work for my community I think I, pro I glanced at the number of participants I think it was pretty much on the lower end of or maybe the lowest but it was a combination of the time and especially the format but it was it was certainly a good effort Mrs. Andrews. Yes, I'd like to give a little feedback on that. Thank you all so much for doing all the work to get the community meetings together. But if we decide to do them again, I would love for board members to be on the front end of the planning process because those are the kinds of things we can tell you. I think I have a lot of people on uh, District 6, but I just know a lot of people do not have access to the computers. And at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, so many people were already at work. And I just talked to a, a person just today, and they said, well, I still can't find that community meeting online. So I would love for us to have the conversations with you about different kinds of settings. You say you're going to do that, but I would like to have different kinds of settings set up as we move through this process uh, that's going to be user-friendly for those people who don't have the technology access, but also to be on the ground to see people personally. I know we don't, can't do big crowds yet, but we can maybe do some simulcasts kind of things in certain places and, and be in the neighborhood for people to know we're visible. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Tierney, go ahead. So that was the first attempt at finding another way to solicit community feedback. Didn't think it would be perfect going forward, so we hear the, the feedback here, and, and should we choose to do that again, we'll adjust. So we appreciate that. So we started this process in pay, phase one. That was pre-work, that was soliciting feedback, analyzing data. We've now recently transitioned to phase two. The kind of culminating event 
in phase two will be on May 26 when draft goals for the next strategic plan are presented to the board, and that will be here shortly. And then we'll transition, the, the, the culminating event is the big public event, really the hard work and heavy lift of this portion will be focus groups, and the focus groups will be after the 26th, after the board sees those draft goals, and they will inform revisions to those goals if necessary. So to talk more about the focus groups is Mrs. Villavicencio. All right, so I know we had a lot of folks indicate interest on the survey, um, over 6,000. Like I said, I also monitor the um, strategic plan inbox, so I've gotten a number of additional folks um, after your community meetings reaching out and saying they'd like to be on a focus group. And then I also wanna give a shout out to Janine Rizzo because through her work, she has been um, interacting with students and has been asking if they would be interested in participating in a focus group. So we have some student information as well. Um, and I know some board members have also sent me contacts of folks who would be really interested in uh, participating in a focus group. So, you know, my, my philosophy is always go big or go home. I know it's not always the best one, but I think we're gonna try and accommodate all 6,000 folks as best as possible. So, um, you know, we will be sending an availability questionnaire to. All interested individuals will also be posting it on our website by this Friday just to confirm that they're still interested but also communicate um, you know calendar options so that I can schedule everything um, as well as just reiterating what the purpose of the meeting will be so I know we talked about community meetings a little bit um, but just being really clear about what that will look like um, so that folks understand um, how we'll be using their time and, and what we'll be able to answer and, and what we won't be able to answer um, so we will also be sending more tailored participation emails to specific groups. Um, I know Mr. Tierney will be talking to board members about that since we have a finite number of you know, um, target groups that we may want to utilize Insight Education Group to conduct those focus groups. So again, we'll be in touch about what that will look like, um, but they will occur um, Thursday, May 27th through Sunday, June 6th. So we do have evening options available because we heard from board members about the community meetings and the timings not always being great. So we will make weekend and evening options available. Again, the availability questionnaire will help me plan that, that structure. Um, again, the goal is to involve as many uh, individuals as possible. We will have some in-person focus groups if the availability questionnaire indicates that that is a need. So again, just given the sheer volume, Google Meet is really gonna help us reach as many folks as possible. So we're really gonna utilize the technology, but again, the availability questionnaire will also ask, you know, in addition to whether in-person or virtual, if they need language support. So um, I have sent out a plea to staff to kind of help with that. Um, and so I will be asking chiefs as well to share that with their staff um, so that I can train up some facilitators internally and we can again try to get to the 6,000 number um, based on the availability questionnaire. So again, um, you know, more information to come, but I wanted to share that so that right after May 26, when those proposed goals from the steering committee are shared with the board and the public, we're gonna hit the ground running and really utilize um, the end of May and early June to see what revisions may need to be made, not, not only based on board feedback on May 26, but the, the public as well. So Mr. Tierney will um, talk to y'all uh, this week during his weekly call outs to kind of see if there um, are other groups that you'd like to engage in this process that are specific and, and not just the ones who reached out to us via the survey. Dr. Robinson. <laughs> Thank you, if, <laughs> if you can pull off 6,000 people, <laughs> like I think I'm gonna put you in charge of the world if I could do that, right? So, but what I wanted to say is, so I think that the, the input meetings that we had, I mean, at least mine went fine. I mean, um, but it's still not who I think we should be listening to. And so, like, and I really would like to have all 6,000 people have their, their voice heard but I think we really, really have to focus on disengaged. Who, if we can, if we can listen, actually hear the voices of those that we have failed to serve, right? So 
You know, like I, I specifically want to make sure that we get input from students, for example, in alternative ed. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when I've asked students at turning points, you know, what would they want us to change so that their younger siblings did not end up at turning points? They always basically said, give them a goal. I mean, in di different words, right? But, and so I think that that's critically important. And maybe if we could specifically try to reach the, um, the adult in those young people's lives, right? Because um, I suspect I, I know what they might say, but I think we need to hear it like authentically, right? And then also recent graduates or, or recent dropouts, those who <laughs> had the benefit of hindsight now to, to tell us um, what we could do better, right? Because I think that we tend to hear from like the usual people, right? Um, and, and even with students, I suspect that we probably had a disproportionate number of student government leaders. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but I, I really, if, if we're gonna talk about, in our, in our very statements, each child, then we, we really have to hear from those that we have not served well, right? And so I'm just gonna ask that you be very conscious of that and, um, and, and in whatever, and I, and I also know that that is going to require some specific um, outreach efforts that are not usual for us. But um, I'm happy to brainstorm that with you. Thank you. Yep, and just to respond, I think that would be great. We're also gonna um, ask members of our steering committee. And I know Elaine Hubbard-Williams is on the steering committee. And so I think she would be a great point of contact for some of those things. But I think, you know, brainstorming is great. And I think whatever lessons we learn now, when we do that portrait of a graduate engagement, that's gonna be very, very important. And so whatever we learn now or folks that we couldn't get to the table, informing that strategy for portrait of a graduate. So I, I hear you, Dr. Robinson, and I'll say the same thing I say to, you know, my boss and, and Dr. Fanoy. We are gonna do our best to get all the things, but continue to give us the feedback so that we can improve because we are, we're, we're doing what we know, but we need everybody at the table to help Go with ahead, that. Dr. Rams. Go ahead. The other thing is don't forget that there are community people who mm -hmm. do focus groups mm -hmm. in case we need to, to reach out to them to help expand our reach. Mrs. Andrews. And just to piggyback on that, Dr. Robinson, you know, Canal Point, the farthest northwest part of Palm Beach County, you know, we have a lot of housing developments uh, in Pahokee where the children uh, live out in the outskirts, and they have asked to have uh, input into this process. I think you're going to probably have to break it down uh, where you can kind of identify some of the school people uh, in close proximity to the neighborhoods where people trust these individuals to go into the neighborhood to kind of do some uh, feedback information, have them fill out some of the surveys and give their input. Same thing in Belle Glade and South Bay. Uh, but you need, just need to know who the people are. They may not always be school employees. Some will be from your area office. But people have called me and says, I can take you, uh, Miss Andrews, or a group out to the neighborhood. And so that's where you're going to have to really go into the neighborhoods. And you have to go on a time where people have actually come home from work, mm -hmm. had their dinner. And so that might be like a seven. Mm -hmm. and still daylight savings time, and, uh, and meet them. And you may have to do more than one visit to kind of uh, get the leaders out there to help you in the neighborhood once you've made your impact out, out in the particular communities. Yep. Work with the Ministerial Alliance people. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of people that can kind of uh, get down to the levels of where we want to find information from. I, I'm happy for the 6,000 that filled out the survey, but we're talking about being on the ground and so I can help you find people that can get right into the network. Thank you. Any other board members, comments? So our next steps, uh, the next the heavy lift is to schedule those focus groups. And you, you heard that with the number of people interested in participating, uh, that will be a lot, but we, you know, we're vested in making sure that every voice is heard that's interested, to Dr. Robinson's point, to reaching out and soliciting feedback from the people who traditionally don't respond, and then also just casting our net widely on feedback on these draft goals. So we'll work particularly hard on that. The next step is where we'll review the feedback survey results with the steering committee. That will be on Wednesday, May 12th, and then at your next 
workshop on the 26th. You'll see draft calls with an strategic plan workshop number five coming up on June 3rd, 23rd. Mr. Chair, that concludes the workshop and we're available for questions. Thank you, Mr. Tierney. Thank you, Ms. Pilar Vicencio. At this time